Today, I'm talking all about the professional seasonal color analysis that I had done and how it's gonna affect my knitting going forward. So just a couple of days ago, I had the opportunity to do my very first in-person color analysis. For anyone who is unfamiliar, a color analysis puts you into one of our four seasons, so spring, summer, fall, or winter. And then within those four, there is also like four subtypes as well, kind of breaking down even further. So when you are assigned a color, you're essentially assigned one fourth of all of the colors in the world to your palette. And then you're also given a subset that is even better fit to you. I felt so lucky that I got to take my color analysis with Melissa Jenkins. She is out of Madison, Wisconsin, and it was such a treat because Melissa is also a knitter. So not only was I talking to her about color the whole time, but I was also talking with her about all the yarns that I'm gonna use, how it's gonna impact my knitting, and just all the things that go into selecting clothes and yarn. I loved that Melissa had this side to her because she fully understands what us knitters go through when we're picking out a yarn choice that not only is a pricey decision, but it's also something we're gonna be working on for a very long time. And it's also something we're really gonna to wanna to cherish in our wardrobe and wear because we spent so much time and money on that thing. But often what happens is maybe we select a color because we just liked it or we saw somebody else wearing it and then all of a sudden you put it on and you're like, oh man, <laughs> like it doesn't really work for me. This isn't what I was expecting. How come it doesn't look good on me, but it looked good on somebody else? So right off the bat, I hit it off with Melissa talking about these sorts of things. Now, I did start my session as well, coming into color analysis, knowing that I had a couple colors in my mind that I knew I looked good in. Like for instance, I've always known I looked good in certain shades of green because of my green eye color. I've also known that I kind of have a yellow sort of undertone. And I figured this out when I first got married to my husband and we were brushing our teeth next to each other and I looked straight yellow next to him. He looked like pink and I looked yellow and it was just so such a stark thing where, you know, like we, it was just an eye opener of we're both Caucasian, but I look so different. My skin looks so different next to his. So there's been these little moments where I have just learned color. I so distinctly remember purchasing things because it looked really good on an influencer or it was a really trendy item. Like I remember Lululemon had this hot pink that came out and when they release colors, they do like everything in that line. And I bought a couple of pieces cause I was like, I just love that hot pink. And I remember trying it on and being like, oh no. <laughs> No. <laughs> like, it just right away when I looked in the mirror, I was like, that does not look good. I'm gonna have to take these back. And I asked my husband and he was like, yeah, that's not your color. Had to take that back. I also remember there is that one Charlotte Tilbury lip color um, that is like, everybody wears it, says it looks so good on them. And it's just like a very true pink, bought it. $40 lipstick later, does not work on me. I never wear it. Um, yeah, just like an endless amount of influencer things, especially makeup is another big one for me where I would want to wear these red lips everyone else was wearing, um, like these pinky nudes, really pale nude shades that would look so different on someone else than they looked on me. So. These I feel like were just little color things in the back of my mind where I knew that I just, I wasn't aware of my exact color. I knew that I couldn't really look at myself objectively enough to know which color I was, but I knew that I was choosing colors incorrectly. 
which was frustrating because I'm a graphic designer. I feel like I can see colors really, really well. Um, I've also loved art and crafts, obviously, throughout my whole life. Um, I've taken a bunch of art classes. I understand color theory pretty well, but it's so hard to look at yourself objectively and to see your colors changing without seeing it back to back. And I think the reason too is because we tell ourselves like, oh, we kind of look good in this or, or your mindset is shifted by like, this is my favorite item. So it, or like the way it feels or whatever. So yeah, I've just never been able to pinpoint it down, but over the past couple of years, color analysis has gotten more and more popular. Um, as I've read and heard, it was really popular in the eighties and then it's kind of resurfaced. And a big part of that has been with the resurfacing of filters. So like on TikTok, there is a pretty popular um, filter where you can see all these colors around you and you can sort of see what color fits you best. Um, and along with that, there's also different apps you can download where AI can like look at um, a bunch of different photos of you and tell you what you are. And it was through all of this and this process that I learned there is nothing truly like going in person. I mean, all of these apps, you guys, gave me different results than the one that I got a few days ago. I never received the answer that I got a few days ago in an app. An app always told me that I was a true spring or a true summer. And now the reveal is that I'm actually an autumn. And more specifically, I am a leaf and a blue autumn. So we'll get a little bit more into that. It's crazy knowing all of those tests I took and the ways I was trying to dress based off of those tests were incorrect. And it was so clear to me going into this color analysis and seeing the colors lift and my face change that I truly am in autumn. The coolest part of the whole entire process for sure is seeing the colors just lift before your eyes. So initially when you go to your appointment, you're just learning a little bit more about the whole process, a little bit of background of House of Color, where they came from and all about how they make their selections. And then you sit down and first, She's trying to decide whether or not you're basically cool or warm toned. So actually for me, first we started out, she was in initially looking at a spring or a winter for me. And a lot of times that's where she starts out and it's pretty obvious to her whether that person is a warm or a cool. And actually we were discovering as she was doing those first couple of colors that she said, maybe I might be on the edge. And that's because nothing was really showing up super vivid to her yet. And a lot of it is because initially she thought I might be a spring. And then she said, you know what, let's pivot. And then she started trying on autumn and summer colors to me, which are the more muted of the two. So whereas a spring and a winter might be like a more stark and vibrant, a more muted would be that fall and that summer. So, then we started going into, she would layer like a summer piece, then a fall piece, a summer piece, then a fall piece. And it was crazy looking at my face because when she would lift one, you would just be able to see like I have a little vein underneath my eye. You would also be able to see I wasn't wearing makeup. So you could see the redness in my face either come out or dull down. And some colors would even make me look really sallow or just like lifeless. Like, you know, if some people have ever said, oh, you look ghostly today, it could just be the color. There was absolutely colors that made me just lose all the color in my face. It was just crazy to see. As you were watching, you're just watching your face color change. And I loved that House of Color has the full swatches because it almost felt like you were wearing a garment fully in that color and you could really easily see the changes before your eye. So what you're seeing on screen is actually, I had a full length mirror in front of me. So I was watching as she was doing it and it just created such a fun experience for me, you guys. I, I was just having so much fun. I think it's because 
I was not only having fun with Melissa, who is just a ball of joy, and she so clearly loves what she does, but I was also having all of these like revelations, right? Like I'm just seeing, you know, all of these past memories of shopping and having disappointment and everything like flash before my eyes. I mean, it sounds so dramatic, but as someone who has had so many of these color experiences and never known what to pick out when I go to a store, it just felt like so much joy of seeing these differences and being like, wow, I really feel like at the end of this, I'm going to feel so much more confident in what I'm choosing to knit with and to purchase because I know it's going to look good on me. And a couple of my favorite moments was this, there was this Kingfisher shade that I was like, wow, I never would have picked yarn in this color. I never would have picked this out at a store, but I could not believe how great it looked on me. That color, I think the dark brown and um, actually like a mustard color, I really loved on myself. And then a lot of the warmish greens just looked incredible. After that, we moved on to doing some makeup and we also put on all the autumn colors on me where she then ranked each color like three stars, two stars, one star. I'll put some of my ratings up on the screen and, and show you guys some of my star ratings and my best colors. Um, but the makeup was really fun too because as we were going through those best colors and also some pairings, we were talking about how makeup can help enhance your color. So say, you know, I'm obviously not going to get rid of everything in my closet right away, but say I am wearing a black that day or a gray, like a color that really isn't in my preferred colors. I can instead make it look a little bit better by perhaps doing my makeup in my shade. So like wearing a rust or a coral colored lip shade or doing a blush that is in my shade and a brown mascara and wearing gold jewelry. And perhaps, you know, do I have like a brown or an autumn shade scarf or accessory, like maybe a headband that can take away from that gray and just bring some more life into my face. So I loved that Melissa was like teaching me tools throughout all of this. You know, it's not feasible financially for me to just swap my whole wardrobe out. But the whole entire time she was talking me through all of these tools that I now feel like I have in my back pocket to make myself feel more like myself when I'm wearing clothes that necessarily don't necessarily make me feel my best. So that was super, super fun. House of Color has a whole line of makeup, you know, every single product. So I got to test all those out and I also came home with a few of them. I ended up purchasing a gold illuminator since I didn't have a gold one. And also I picked three different lip shades. One was a rust, one was a coral in the lipsticks. And then I also bought a nude liquid lip. So, so excited to be wearing those throughout the week. I'm actually wearing the rust lip shade right now. So I believe there are three reds for my shade. And so I ended up buying two of them. And I definitely wanted to buy lips and a blush. I also bought a blush going into this just because I've always felt like those are the hardest things for me to purchase when I'm in Sephora. It's I'm drawn to the colors I like um, and it's hard to know what's gonna look good on me. So now I know going forward things to look for, which are essentially just more like muddy, um, in warm tones within my makeup. So whether it's the neutral to warm side, um, when I'm looking at makeup and a lot more of those muted tones I'm finding are going to be the best on me, but I'm so excited that I have this like house of color website to look at and purchase from through Melissa going forward. If I want my exact shades in my color season. So just a little bit more about the house of color process. This is a little booklet that I got sent home with. And within this, this is kind of all about my autumn color season. And it goes through and talks about which browns are good on me, beiges, which yellows, which pinks. And I have a little swatch booklet that I'm gonna get to go take shopping that I'm gonna show you shortly. In this, she also wrote down what makeup she put on me. 
and then also my star ratings. And this is where she also denoted that I am a leaf and a blue autumn. Typically someone gets put into one of those subsets and she just felt like she couldn't choose. So she gave me two, which I'll take, that's more color for me. And also denoted on here are just instead of black, my better than black shades are really a really dark olive or like a navy dark or really a dark brown. A dark brown and a dark olive are gonna be my true better than blacks, but I would ultimately say instead of black, if there is like a navy shade, that would probably be better than black as well. Throughout the rest of this, it just talks a little bit more about makeup and then about building a wardrobe. It talks about how when you're building a wardrobe, maybe I wanna start with some dark chocolate browns, coffees and camels, also having those dark olive greens, a warm navy, oyster white, and then I can have in um, some more basics in like those reds, forest, sage, olives, kingfisher blues. Um, and then it also gives me some color combinations, which is really fun. And what I loved about working with Melissa as a knitter is she gave me some beautiful palettes that I think are just gonna look so good in some color work. So I'm on the lookout for a really beautiful stranded color work sweater where I get to use one of the palettes she selected for me. I think it would just be so fun to use what she gave me and make something super beautiful. And then the booklet that I think I'm gonna be using a ton is my little autumn color palette that has all of my shades. So this kind of reminds me of like a paint um, swatch palette if you've ever held one of those. And in this right away at the beginning, it says that my autumn colors are rich, warm, earthy and vibrant. And so when I'm shopping for either clothes or yarn, I want to be like asking myself, is this color rich? Is this color warm, earthy? Like, does it have those brown tones in it? Is it more muddy? Um, and then also, is it vibrant? As I go through these, all of these are fabric swatches. So I absolutely love that aspect of it because I just think that they look so nice. So I actually think this is giving you a pretty true color here. So I'm just gonna go through these. So you can see we have my browns. Here are some oranges, some more neutral to corals. Then we have some light greens, a little bit more of those like camel-y to taupe -y shades. These are called like lizard shades because while it looks gray, it's really leaning more towards a green gray. These are my best shades of green. A little bit of lighter greens here, whereas these fall into more of the vibrant greens I was talking about. So I can still wear some of these vibrant colors, um, but these are more of my one star shades and maybe things I would make like in an accessory instead of a full sweater. Could still definitely make a full sweater. Obviously, I can make a full sweater in any color I want, but just if I'm looking for my best of the best, it's gonna be those blues and those true leaf autumns. Some yellows. Now these are those blue shades that I was talking about and I believe we have a, a true like royal purple. What's this called? Oh, that's marine navy. Okay, marine navy, royal purple. That's what I was talking about, helioscope. These are those colors that really, really surprised me that I felt like I looked so good in that Kingfisher. Um, and then we have more of a peacock shade and a lighter green. And then at the end of the booklet, I'm gonna have all four palettes here to just compare and contrast against. I absolutely love that the experience comes with this. I feel like this is something that is going to be so helpful when I'm shopping for yarn and clothes. The fact that I get to bring this with and have something to compare and contrast, I feel like it's something that I'm going to be learning and perhaps I'll just know my colors um, and I won't need to bring this everywhere like in the future. But as we start out, I'm just excited to bring this with. So a lot of this as well is kind of just using um, things you know about color, understanding your words, and understanding the different tones and hues within these um, 
to kind of match your ultimate shades. I wanted to say some of my favorite colors as well and shades that I'm gonna be looking for yarns in first are absolutely going to be that dark brown. However, I already have that one farm yarn that I think is gonna be so perfect for this. That's one of the things I'm gonna be knitting up next is my Eva cardigan in that dark brown. I do really love the chestnuts and tans as well. I could see myself making something for that. I do think as I go into spring next year, maybe I will be making like a sage or a coral item um, instead of more traditional spring colors. I have these other colors that are still springy in nature that I can make to feel like I'm knitting in the season still. You know, I love that I'm kind of learning how I can do that as well. Um, I love like her traditional camel, coffee, um, definitely the dark olive and the moss green is something I would love to make. Um, I've been looking at making like a nice turtleneck later this winter and I could see myself making that in a dark olive. Um, let's see what else we got here. A mustard shade. I thought that would be so fun in an accessory. Um, love that. And then again, this kind of kingfisher shade that I keep talking about. I actually have some yarn left over from my stripe pipe that I'm making that's in this exact shade that I think I'm gonna be making into an accessory as well. But I think that or that peacock or forest green would make such a beautiful garment in the future as well. So yeah, that was my complete experience with color analysis. I think going forward into my knitting, I'm excited to have some more tools and some more confidence when I'm picking colors and also some more tools for picking um, like different, like I'm, if I'm doing stranded knitting, I have some tools for different colors I can choose to make some really, really awesome palettes. I just feel like going forward, I'm gonna have more confidence in picking my yarn shades because I've already seen those colors draped over me looking good. So I know it's gonna look good. It's not something where I'm picking it out, wondering, having buyer's remorse and guilt. I know this is gonna look good and so I can be excited about it. It. I also love that it is making me want to wear more color. So a lot of times with those experiences I talked about earlier, when I get so disheartened by color, it makes me just want to shut down and only wear black and only wear things that I felt like I looked good in, like a couple of shirts that I felt like I looked good in and a black and a white. And I was just like, that's fine. I, I'm sick of buying color. It's done me dirty. Like I can't trust it. And I feel like on the other opposite end of the spectrum now, I now feel like I have the tools I need to wear more color and knit with more color. So just, be excited and on the lookout for that on my channel. Um, I'm still going to be knitting with color, obviously. So I think sometimes when people think autumn, oh, you're assigned an autumn shade, like you're only going to be knitting with brown and orange and that's it. And that's absolutely just not the case. I have all of these beautiful colors to choose from and select and that makes me really, really excited. And like I mentioned before too, there are going to be times when I'm at yarn festivals or I'm shopping online or maybe a yarn dyer has something they want me to promote and it is a beautiful new shade that's not in my palette. I am still 100% open to that because I want to still enjoy color and feel the joy that color brings me. So just know this isn't like a hard and fast rule. I don't have to stick to this. I am not an ugly person if I wear shades outside of my color palette. It's just a tool I have in my back pocket to feel my best on the days where maybe I don't feel the best. Um, so I'm really, really excited to explore and also to just Try this out for the next year. See where it leads me. See how I feel in these new colors. And I'm excited that I have this channel to talk with you guys about these things and to see, you know, if this process was completely worthwhile for me or not. 
So again, thank you so much to Melissa Jenkins who did this color analysis for me. I will leave all of her information down in the description box below so that anybody local to me can be in contact with her. I know that her bigger company, House of Color, has different people um, in different areas as well. So maybe perhaps you could reach out to Melissa and she could help you find someone in your area as well. It's been an experience that I've been looking for Forward to for so long and I feel like it was everything and more than I was looking for so I just can't wait for you guys to perhaps try it out yourself and I'm just curious if any of you have ever done it how it impacted your knitting I'd love to hear down in the description box below I'd also love to hear did you guess that I was a true autumn because I texted Leslie of Knit California who also got a color analysis and she is a summer and I said I'm a true autumn who would have guessed and she said we knew <laughs> and so <laughs> I'm curious if you guys had also guessed that I was an autumn or if perhaps you thought I was a different color season as well. Um, thank you guys so much for watching. I will be back next week with a video updating you on all of my current projects and any finished items that I have. And I hope that you guys have a great rest of your week. Happy knitting and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.